So I'm doing another Abtec alien painting. These Abtec aliens are pretty weird. They got like plate-like skin. Their skin is like almost like plant cells, you know? And this guy wanted his head split open. So I split his head open. And, uh, huh. Not too sure what I'm doing. I'm just feeling my way through here. Because this image is in my head, I don't really have any references to go off of. And honestly, I don't know exactly what an alien brain would look like. So I'm half trying to go with the vision in my head. And half trying to just intuitively feel my way through an alien brain <clears throat> one time i painted these aliens that were called nephronomica 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 and uh they have two brains I don't know how that works either exactly, but I've kind of seen it in my head. Join at the top of the spine somehow. And they really have like left hemisphere, four lobes, right hemisphere, left hemisphere, right hemisphere is probably how we'd explain it. But these humanoid aliens are like everywhere. I guess that we're something that happens. Or maybe it's directed panspermia. I really do not know everything. And I honestly don't know how These aliens communicate with me. Some people say that it's our neurotransmitters, it's the DMT in us. Like we're in a sea of all these different frequencies. And then If quantum entanglement is a thing, maybe we're literally connected with other life forms through some sort of quantum entanglement. I like hinting at illusion in painting using shading or texture, but I'm not, I'm not an illusionist. I'm not, uh, I basically don't like painting reality, I guess exactly the way reality is. Maybe I don't like reality the way it is here in this dimension or on Earth or in our paralleled reality or our realm or whatever you want to call it. I've been 
researching the magical ether a little bit, trying to comprehend it. And the idea was that there is some kind of medium that electromagnetic waves and frequencies uh, move through. In magic, they talk about currents and how God is like a divine, good, loving frequency or current moving through everything and life springs forth out of that and you know goodness and things perpetuate out of that field of of goodness So I like this charcoal stuff that I've been doing. I guess it's kind of push and pull with the darkness and the light and whatever, but. It has been working out. So I had this guy who kind of put himself out there as some being, being wise and knowing stuff. He was like, oh, we need all sorts of people in the world. And we need all sorts of variation and stuff. And I was like, well, I could do without all sorts of things. I could do without murderers. I could do without child molesters. I think the world would be fine without soldiers and warlords or whatever and apparently we have a problem with billionaires we probably don't need billionaires so you know we don't really need all sorts of people you know do we need malicious people or should we Train people not to be malicious. I think what I'm going to do for this painting is kind of do a grayscale painting. Artists used to call that grise. They'd do a grayscale painting and then they'd kind of glaze over top of it with color. Painting's an awesome adventure. You kind of just go into a different world and you kind of get lost in a trance while you're working. So these Abtec aliens, uh, they didn't talk the way that we talk <laughs> and use so many different sounds. They used their breath and they manipulated their breath. They probably couldn't like yell things at each other maybe. Now I'm supposed to put 12 electrodes into this guy's brain. And I gotta start with these spikes. These are some kind of metal spikes that go in a certain depth 
into a certain part of the brain. And then there's like electrical wiring. Two wires per spike. And of course, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just feeling my way through. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight of 12. There's nine of 12. Ten of twelve. There's number eleven, and there's number twelve. So now I'm supposed to paint electrical wires coming off of here. And going up to the device above. I don't know how Bob Ross did it. I don't know how he could talk and give instructions. And focus completely on this painting. Because painting, once you get lost in it, it's kind of like meditative. You're just... Uh, it's like you're in your own little world. And you kind of get into a trance. So these Abtec aliens have this message of light and a message of love and unity and community. They didn't set up uh, systems of exploitation the way that humans have. Someone asked me about my paintings and they were like, why are the aliens so pissed off? They look really mad. And, uh... And the aliens kind of respond that uh, they're not too pleased with humanity. Uh received these messages of enough war, brothers. 
enough war brothers and things like that so yeah I think the aliens might kind of be pissed off with us like personal space is violated on earth is like the normal means and we don't really have our freedom yet like freedom is sold to us this idea of freedom is sold to us but I don't know if we as individuals have our freedoms the way that we want to, you know, especially in these countries that we claim are democratic. There are better ways of distributing goods. There are There's no profit in solving problems. Because once you solve a problem, you can't keep pulling money out of it. And you know, there's a problem with the whole stock market system like investors want to leech profit out of everything and that's left us with this big mess you know you can leech a lot of profits out of poison and you can leech a lot of profits out of war And like that's a major problem on planet Earth. That the best way to keep on top of the herd is to keep on leeching profit out of everything. Unfortunately, like, value comes out of dead things, like, apparently dead people, but, like, a tree isn't of value in a capitalist world until it's dead. And a chicken's not really worth anything in a capitalist society until it's dead. I don't know if that's the best way to go about doing things. So I really like Rembrandt paintings like I've studied all sorts of artists. I love Egon Shelley. I really love Leon Golub. 
Well, I, I just love art. I love seeing new pictures, but... You know, there's just some art that stands out that speaks to you. And Anyway, getting back to Rembrandt. Sometimes I like to challenge myself and channel Rembrandt while I'm painting because he just had a way of like working with paint. It's amazing. It's like textural and it's tonal. Like there's just this push and pull. between his tones. Like I hope Rembrandt was a good guy, you know? I admire his work. I like the way that he portrayed himself, you know? I like seeing His self-portraits, he did a lot of self-portraits. There's a self-portrait of Picasso that he did during his blue period when he was quite a bit younger. And that's literally one of my favorite paintings. I did a few studies of that painting when I was learning. So, these Abtec aliens never had the concept of evil, you know, that, that that was even a thing. I guess just some civilizations developed, never enslaved each other. didn't want to enslave their children like everything on earth is so weird it's all heavy-handed we're taught this dualistic stuff like can't everything be endlessly expansive without evil or without anything being like malicious or trying to violate everything like science tries to push real hard on nature and like we're trying to we're trying to violate the laws of nature or the laws of physics or whatever manipulate things and like seems like that's what magic is on earth too in some ways like pushing real hard on nature violating things trying to push your will into the world or you know whether it's through some sort of practice or ceremony or you know just repetition is a very powerful thing And like when you get into this ceremonial stuff, you, you're doing the same thing again and again. And there's some kind of energy there. You know, you're replicating something over and over and over and over. 
That's what I love about printing things and making t-shirts and stuff that many people can have. So that a piece of art, you know, can have that sort of power of just... Being something that's been done over and over and over and over. And like... In churches, you know, they do sacrament or whatever. And that's a ceremony. That's a ritual as much as anything. And like baptism, something that happens over and over and it's like a cleansing ritual or something you know and baptism is actually an ancient practice it wasn't something new for John the Baptist he was taught it and there's still sects of people that they go out and baptize everybody Every holy day, once a week, they get baptized and they go through that cleansing ritual. And so, like, when I drink water, I kind of like the idea that I'm going through a cleansing ritual, or if I bathe, or if I go swimming in the water, I'm going through some sort of rebirth. And then you go back up on the shores, back into the world, out of the water, out of the life. Out of the life-giving substance. And then you're cleansed or reborn or made new or whatever, however you want to look at it. And like, I like the idea of prayer... I like the idea of sending your intentions out into the universe. I don't like the idea of groveling and worshipping things. The word worship has two meanings, you know, it's workship, it's being a slave to something. Like you're a slave to the gods, or you're a slave to whatever, you're a slave to the government I'm going to try out this weirdo green paint it's supposed to be opalescent I don't know, maybe it's gimmicky. I've talked to lots of artists about cheating, though, and the general consensus is that there's no such thing as cheating in art, you know? You just try and develop your process. So I guess that's what I'm doing here. I'm just further developing my process. Yeah, this paint is weird for sure. It's uh, It's got a little bit of a green undertone, but it's kind of clear paint. I had one university professor, a painting professor, she also taught theory, but she 
he kept going on about how visceral and organic painting was and uh and i like to think about that like you've got the canvas which is like stretched out skin and you've got the paint and the paint's all gooey and kind of organic I love painting because it's always an adventure and it's always an exploration. Sometimes I experiment too much and then my paintings don't work out. A couple times I tried to paint with glue as a binder and sometimes it works out well. A few times it hasn't. About a week ago I had a whole painting uh, peel right off the canvas. And that was a bit of a letdown, but I went back to that canvas and painted pretty much the exact same thing. I'm still working on that painting. I put it up on my wall. It's good to look at things from a distance sometimes think about it your first idea is rarely ever your best idea So, your first attempt, I guess, is never your best effort. Way back in high school, my art teacher never treated anything like it was complete. He was always like, oh, that's a good effort. And I think like one painting on its own is an effort, but when you've done a bunch of them, and you have a body of work to look at, you got something you can see some progress I love going to retrospectives every once in a while I'll go to Ottawa to the National Gallery and I'll see Gauguin or Picasso or whoever and it's kind of nice to see a body of work you can kind of track an artist's progress Art is a definitely a good thing to get involved with. Makes you pre feel 
pretty useful. Not to say that I'm any more useful than any other person, but for some reason this feels super productive. When I first envisioned this painting, I was going to do it a lot smaller and put this guy's whole body on here. But I decided to kind of zoom in. I guess I'm showing where the action is. with this whole brain contraption. I don't know if I'd chop my head open and stick electrodes into my brain. I know they started that sort of research here on Earth with paraplegics. At one point there's a dude who's going to get a head transplant. That was interesting. I love showing my art to people, not just to buyers or whatever, but just really to anyone. Sometimes I'll meet people and bring them back to my studio here and show them what I'm working on. talk to people about my paintings and sometimes they just give me great ideas you know they think about things differently than I would think about things I'm just not happy if I'm not making art like I get kind of involved and obsessed with what I'm doing And like I said, it just, uh, it makes me feel horribly useful if I'm creating. These alien collectives say that we shouldn't worship destruction. I think that's a big problem with people. We like explosions. We like it when things get demolished. We like gunfights in our movies.
we like destruction, I guess. Yeah, this iridescent green is some of the weirdest paint I've ever seen. Ultra near to my house, we got this little art store called Artsy, and they sell paints and stuff. That's where I get like half of my art supplies. And they have all sorts of weird stuff like this. Metallic paints and fluorescent paint and iridescent paint. Wish I could go back in time and watch Rembrandt paint. Caravaggio was a good painter in that respect, too. With the atmospheric qualities of his paintings. We've had so many good artists on Earth. Vermeer is good at that too. He's an illusionist, but uh, he was good at mood. Good at creating mood. For me, painting has taught me to think about light a lot. And I live in a world of light. Like, I focus on sight so much.
When I was in grade six, I remember one day we had a huge debate about snow, whether snow was white or blue. And like, when you see snow being white, it's because all the white light is being reflected into your eye. But when you look at the shadow tone of light of the snow, it's blue. I'm in the camp that the white light is you seeing everything at once and you're capping out. It's just all of the white, all the, all the colors. It's just everything all at once. These Abtec aliens don't, uh, they don't have bone the way that we have bone. They do have some kind of substructure. I guess like a second skin. That's how I've seen it or understand it. One time I was painting an alien and it had a five lobed brain. And it had bone in between the lobes and the bone had holes in it and fluid move between and I guess like dendrites little fingers of brain cells went through those microscopic little holes or whatever and they called these uh, these partitions of their brain fishes so they had several fishes in their mind I don't really have a set way of painting. Like, I do the same things again and again. But I really do like to kind of feel my way through. I used to say, like, every painting needs to have... A wash you know you start a painting by doing a wash 
over the whole canvas. It is a good method, like it gives your painting unity. I might just do a wash of the background here, I don't know. so spoiled to live in North America where even poor people can get all this awesome paint all these pre-mixed colors I kind of couldn't imagine going back in time and having to paint when you had to mix all your own pigments. Like, people still do that, make their own paints. I get a kick out of painting though, not not mixing paints. So I guess I'm living in a good time and in a good place. <laughs> 